Hi Claire. Hi there. So Microsoft has just released a research report on maximising the AI opportunity. Can you give us a bit of insight into why we've done this? Many of our customers, uh, the topic of AI and what that's going to mean to their business and their business model is, is significantly top of mind. And you only have to look at any newspaper or news report. It's clearly a big uh, topic of discussion on what the future of AI is going to bring. Um, so we wanted to um, provide a really in-depth perspective on um, how AI was going to shape uh, both business and what the opportunity would be going forward. So the research looked at 1,000 business leaders and 4,000 employees and 41% of organisations feel their current business models will cease to exist in the next five years. I mean, that's a frightening statistic. It is frightening <laughs> and dramatic at the same time, yeah. I mean, I think it was important to us to have the perspective of both business leaders and their workers, because you often get a different point of view um, from there. Um, but I think particularly from the business leaders, this fear of uh, business model disruption, um, how they're going to get out innovated, what the rise of competition was going to be, and the role that technology is going to play in that disruption um, is definitely something that's top of mind for them. Um, but the reality is, is not many of them are doing anything about it. You know, over half of the people that we interviewed recognize that there's significant disruption ahead, but they're not embracing the technologies um, like AI um, to help them solve those problems. So, um, and we really want um, AI to be, um, not be seen as a threat, but be seen as an opportunity for UK businesses. Now you get out and talk to a lot of customers. Can you give us a bit of insight into how some customers are responding to this and having success with artificial intelligence? Yeah, well, therein lies, uh, therein lies the opportunity because I think for all of those customers that are afraid of what's going to happen but not yet taking action and next steps, um, of the customers that are doing something with AI today, we're seeing some very positive um, early results from that. Um, of the people that we surveyed, um, customers that are using AI today are performing 5% better um, than those that aren't. You know, and that will be in their, both their top line, in their productivity, and in their business return. And interestingly, in addition to that, those organizations that embrace it with a kind of open, um, open format with their employees and in an inclusive style, um, as well as taking an ethical stance on AI within their organization, can perform up to 9% better. So you think in the current age of innovation and competitive advantage, that's significant business improvement return um, that's available for companies if they look at how to invest um, in their business model and innovation. And on the topic of ethics, Manx has been very vocal on the need for an ethical approach to AI. Um, why do you think that's so important? Well, I think the, if you're thinking about um, you know, the potential of AI and how that makes decisions for businesses that humans will then interpret, um, it needs to be built with um, you know, a conscious and unconscious bias in mind um, and make sure that the way that those algorithms are being developed um, are done in a way that's inclusive um, for, for society going forward. I mean, there is recent cases of organizations that have had to take uh, recruitment bots off the market because of the um, unexpected consequences of gender bias, for example. So I think, I think we have to take it very seriously. And, and as I said, for those companies that are taking an ethical stance on, um, on this as they implement it within their organization, they are actually performing significantly better um, than even companies that are just deploying AI. So um, it's, it's something we take very seriously at Microsoft, and I think for, as an industry, um, it will be what differentiates organizations going forward. So as part of that conversation, skills and jobs are clearly critical. What do businesses need to do to equip their employees to make the most of the opportunity? Clearly, this is a very big topic. Um, I mean, where to start um, uh, with skills. And if you think about uh, technology innovation, the innovation in industry is not something new. So if you think about, you know, from the typewriter to the PC or uh, people growing up without mobile phones, various the standards that you would have in the industry now where everybody has got access to information in real time. So we've been through these um, technology changes quite significantly. The, the difference now is the speed of change um, that's going about. And so organizations need to rapidly look at the skill base that they've got. A um, couple of themes, you know, to answer your question. One is the need for 
uh, data scientists and more technical skills will definitely be on the rise. Um, and making sure that, you know, um, from schools and universities to businesses, organizations are embracing um, those, the, the, the requirement for technical skills. But I think on the um, more, more the creative side, I think the requirement for more creative um, skills, more problem solving skills of the data that's served up, what questions to ask, um, that kind of um, skill and development will be really important. Um, I guess the exciting part of the skills that's going to change um, is the opportunity for jobs to be more creative and perhaps, may I say, less boring. It takes out some of the monotony and allows people's creativity to shine. But it takes organisations to really get behind that within their company um, and think of ways that they can um, both skill um, and involve their employees in how they might problem solve some of the problems for their organisation. So it seems really important that businesses embark on this journey now. What practical steps can they take if they're a little bit further behind on the maturity curve for AI? Yeah, well, if they're, hard, if they're the 50% of the businesses that are sitting there thinking, my business model is going to get disrupted, but I'm not doing anything, then my, um, I would get them to think about, like, start small. Um, you know, sometimes it seems scary and overwhelming to think about what artificial intelligence is going to do to transform your business model. They're big questions for an organization to ask themselves. So starting small and thinking about pilots is definitely the way to go. A um, couple of things for organization and leaders to think about. One is culture. Um, I think for any organization to thrive um, on uh, AI technology, they need to have an environment that is going to mean it's embraced and it's not seen as scary or threatening um, to that organization. There, um, there is a phrase that says um, the AI within your organization will be how you nurture and grow it, not dissimilar to how you may raise a child, um, perhaps with all its tantrums and everything else. <laughs> so I think you know how you nurture and grow um, AI and you make it a very inclusive thing within your organization. So uh, some of the more successful companies have been doing hackathons within their company thinking about the problems that they're trying to solve and how to involve the organization in bringing everybody together to, um, to encourage people's ideas has been quite effective. So that area of culture uh, and an environment that means that AI is not a scary thing is, uh, is one. Um, second is skills. I think we've touched on that already. Uh, but thinking about where are the areas that you would invest in for your company uh, based on the profile of your skill base and how that's going to evolve. Um, and then the final one, and it seems like a really obvious one, but what problem are you actually trying to solve? If you think your business model is going to get disrupted, where are you going to focus that's going to have the most impact for your organization, the most impact for your customers? Um, and focus in there um, in terms of how you move forward. Uh, let me give you some examples of some customers that you know, started small but are beginning to see some really significant returns and impact uh, to both their business model and their organization. Uh, so one is a, a company called Agrometrics. Um, it's an um, AI platform based around innovation in food production. But and it, you know, in the in the media today, you will read about challenges of growing population, challenges of us needing much more food. Not to mention Brexit and supply chains and all the rest of it. Um, and so this organisation is focused really on helping farmers uh, predict the yield uh, for their potatoes or their crops. Um, and they can use the data and AI from that farmer to predict what their yield is going to be. So they can then forecast income outgoings uh, and production for this farmer, which if you think for a small farmer, that's going to have significant impact on their, on their livelihood, um, you know, both for now and for the long term. So that's, that's a really exciting one and one that I think has very positive impact for food production. Another example is Great Ormond Street Hospital who I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, but of the amazing work that GOSH does on the treatment of very sick children um, and the incredible skill that the doctors have there, there is a scary statistic that says that 30% of the original diagnosis of children is sometimes incorrect. Um, and through the use of data, patterns and AI, they believe that they are able to get that uh, percentage down significantly so that the great doctors and practitioners can really focus on the work that they do best, which is saving lives and making children healthy. So that, what, that's one we're particularly excited about in terms of the impact that it will have. And of course, Microsoft are here to help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd encourage customers to really 
um, learn from the research report. There's lots of incredible insight there from customers that are already doing this today, um, but we're totally here to help. So uh, for next steps for those customers, uh, please reach out to Microsoft directly or um, take advantage of the many thousands of partners that we have. We have 25,000 partners um, in the UK in literally every region of the country um, that are dealing with both small businesses, mid-size, uh, right up to enterprise. And we are uh, committed um, to helping customers uh, through this journey in what will be an exciting opportunity uh, for helping them transform their businesses in the years, years ahead. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Claire. Yeah, thank you.